When, when we talk about mutual assistance, uh, none of the companies anymore are large enough to, to handle these major events by themselves. So like when we have our big tornadoes, our major ice storms, uh, we get on the phone and we call all of our neighbors, uh, all the contractors in, uh, in the region, and we get them uh, headed to Oklahoma City to help us. So when they have major events like the hurricanes uh, down on the Gulf or down on the East Coast, uh, they reach out to us and uh, we do the mutual assistance and we respond to them. Well, on a hurricane, it, it depends on if you're in on ground zero, like we were down at uh, Rockport, Texas uh, back in October, or if you're on the outer bands of it, you know, the damage is more like a windstorm. But uh, from what I've seen in Puerto Rico, it came right over the entire island. So there was a, a lot of devastation uh, system-wide on that one. We, uh, we were warned or, or just had a lot of discussions on uh, what to expect, everything from uh, the, poison, the poison ivy. You know, it, there's a lot of that island, it's like a jungle. Uh, large uh, vines of poison ivy, the, the snakes, uh, African bees, uh, all kinds of different things we're not normally used to here in Oklahoma. Uh, so between us and the safety group, uh, we put together a pretty good package and went well prepared. Probably the biggest is the, uh, the terrain, uh, the mountains, the jungles, uh, the valleys they have. And uh, the probably number one thing that we weren't prepared as much as we could was the traffic. There's a lot of traffic. There is 1,100 people per square mile in Puerto Rico. And uh, they all have a car, I think. And, and a red light don't mean, well, first of all, there was no signal lights. True. And then when they got signal lights, red don't mean stop. Stop signs don't mean stop. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, a three lane road is really five lanes when you count the shoulders. Uh, so it's just, you know, you're on a one lane road in the mountains uh, in these big trucks of ours. And next thing you know, you're meeting another truck or another car on a curve. Uh, so, so there's no way to prepare us uh, from here in Oklahoma and Arkansas for that kind of uh, driving. And what was your, your most rewarding experience that you recall from this particular trip? It has to be the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, they've been now five months uh, without electricity. I, uh, I can't imagine going through that here in Oklahoma. Oklahomans wouldn't put up with that, I don't think, but we're spoiled. Uh, the, uh, the people, though, they're not mad. They love us. Uh, they love OG&E. They love the thunder. Uh, they all know the thunder, and they all know Westbrook. So they're, they're just wonderful people that uh, they, they, they hug you. Uh, they feed us. Uh, we have plenty of food, lunch, breakfast, supper. But uh, once we get in their areas, their neighborhoods, we come out and they want to they wanna serve us breakfast, they want to serve us lunch. And, uh, you know, they won't, they won't take no for an answer. You insult them if you try to say no or if you try to pay them. Uh, they bring you in, they, they set you down, they serve the food to you. Uh, they fill your plate, set it in front of you, they pray for you. And, uh, you know, things like that is... is we don't get that everywhere we go, and uh, these people, uh, they, they just, they're wonderful people. I'll tell you two more stories. Uh, first of all, where we're, where we're working at over there, there's no hotels. Uh, the hotels around the San Juan, the resorts and everything. So for us to have a place to stay besides in a bunk trailer or in a, in a tent, uh, they went around and they found enough people to uh, get out of their homes. And uh, us and Centerpoint and Encore, a total of over 200 people, uh, we all had beds to stay in. Uh, I was in a four bedroom home uh, with three, uh, we used three bedrooms and three baths, showers. And uh, those people moved in with uh, relatives, with friends, and actually rented those out to us just like a hotel. They took all their personal items out of the house uh, they had air conditioners in them, uh, had dogs, chickens, uh, 
ponies. We had it all right there, just kind of, kind of like being at the home. At, uh, and that was really special that uh, people would give up their homes for us to come over and stay in. Okay. And the other story? The other story, uh, one of the teams was over at Manatee and uh, had worked real hard and over a period of five or six days restored power to three or four hundred people in neighborhoods and uh, they were getting lunches and stuff. So uh, they asked me to come over because we was, uh, they talked to the mayor and they had the community center and I went over and ate lunch with them and uh, took a bunch of pictures and uh, they, they, uh, they wouldn't take any money. That was an insult. Uh, they wouldn't let me make a donation to the building fund or to the paint fund. So, uh, you know, we got through that. Well, I'm out in the, in the company truck. I'm answering some emails, some text messages, making some calls. And there was a, a seven-year-old, uh, a, young, a young boy walked up to my window and he had a sack, and he, he, tried, he, he couldn't hardly set it in his front window, that pickup. And I said, no, we're fine. And he couldn't speak English. And he, he finally got that sack inside the pickup and just stuck it there, so I took it. And I looked out the window, and his grandmother was standing on the porch. And, uh, you know, I got out, and I thanked her and everything. And it was evident this family didn't have a lot but he, uh, he had a two-liter bottle of Coke and six bags of chips for us. <laughs>